Throughout this chapter, we've been looking at colour and contrast. And finally, I want to take a look at ways in which we can ensure that there is consistent contrast within our designs to make them as accessible as possible to people which may have certain visual disabilities. It's not only disability. Aging eyes, I tell you. You know, I have good vision, and uh, it's getting more difficult when I don't have high contrast to read well. Well, interestingly, the draft of the new W3C Web Accessibility Guidelines state quite clearly that we must make it easy for people to distinguish between foreground information and background images. And they've developed an algorithm which measures contrast, what they term their contrast lum what they term their luminosity contrast ratio, to ensure that as designers we make a serious effort, I would say, to ensure that our designs are as accessible as possible. Now that's not going to be possible within every design. I'm sure that there will be times when a client turns around and says that they must have their logo against a particular background colour or they need to have a certain set of colourways. This is quite common for clients to have style guidelines. Oh yeah, definitely in branding. And these guidelines are often developed with no consideration not only to what colours work well on screen, um, take no account of any form of accessibility guidelines. So luckily there are tools available which make it much easier for us to test that we're using sufficient contrast. Now Jez Lemon over at Juicy Studio developed an analysing tool for luminosity and contrast. And this is something which runs online, it's on his website, and I use this tool all the time, particularly in difficult situations. So now I'm going to use a combination of browser tools just to run through my usual process for determining contrast. So I'm going to flick back to my website now and I'm using the web developer extension, the web developer toolbar for Firefox and under information we have a very handy little tool for viewing colour information. So when I click this over in a new tab in Firefox it lists all of the colours which I've used in my style sheets. Now I'm going to pick this dark red colour which I'm going to use as my background and I'm going to flick back into Juicy Studio's analyzer and set that colour as the background. Now on my site I often use white text against coloured backgrounds which I appreciate can be difficult to read for certain people. But let's run the test and see how we do. Very, very quickly, it calculates that in this particular instance, I've passed at level 2 and that the luminosity contrast ratio is sufficient according to the W3C standards. It's not going to be the case for all of the colours that I use in my design. So let's flick back into the results from the web developer toolbar and pick the brighter red underneath and see how we do. So I'm going to flick back into Juicy Studio, change the background colour, and calculate again. And in this case, yet again, I've passed. I'm not doing badly. Looks good. Let's do a couple more. Let's check out this light blue colour. So I'm going to copy that from this page, paste it back over into Juicy Studio, and recalculate. Mm -hmm. Here we can see that according to the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines that there's not sufficient contrast there between the white text on the blue background. Yeah, I think if I were looking at that for very long, I don't, you know, if you could imagine a page filled with body text, white against that color, it would be very tiring for my eyes, I'm sure. Let's experiment, though, and let's change the color of the text and see how we do. Let's change it to black and see whether we can pass by using black text against the blue background. Interestingly, it passes. Personally, I don't think it's any more readable. I think it's more readable, but I'm not sure that I would use it either. I mean, it's just, yeah. White text is, as you mentioned, notoriously difficult, I think, for people. Also, the other problem is, is, as you see here, this is in a field, but whatever else is around it will affect you as well. As we're looking at this page, it's in a box, and outside is the white and the yellow, and, and I think that 
Another thing to take into account is the experience of all the colors on the page as well. What a handy tool this is. It's a very handy tool. There is another technique which I personally use quite often, which is to position myself about you know, two feet away from the screen and squint, literally so that I'm really peering at the design just through my eye eyelashes. And it's just a quick test. You know, you're not going to read the text, but it, it does give you a quick indication of whether or not you've got some sufficient contrast or some contrast issues that you want to test more thoroughly. I think the main thing to consider with all of these tests is that it's very important that we ensure now that when we design for the web that we're as inclusive as possible. And we need to ensure that the widest possible audience is available for our sites. And if that means running some simple checks like this, either on our design files, as we saw with VizCheck in the previous example, or with this, in terms of calculating whether or not a design has sufficient contrast for luminosity, then it's a, it's a very worthwhile thing to be doing.